Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're doing Arcane Bridging the Rift Part 5. We gave it our best shot. This is the last part for this uh, production documentary and um, this is it. This is it. Yeah, and this was released like two months ago so I'm not too late on this one. But um, it's been such a ride so far. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to have reacted to this, happy to have learned a lot of the process that is involved with all of this and I can't wait to check out our final episode. Let's take a look. I will give you the word if you prove you can take it. The world if you can. I'm going to repeat that because that was horrible. Let's start that again. I will give you the world if you prove you can take it. Guys, without my glasses, I am, I don't know. Usually I'm not bad. I'm really good with close, close vision, but I don't know what's going on these days. And I want to stop using it so much because of the light reflecting off of the glasses. I don't know if it's a problem for you guys. Let me know in the comment section because, um, I don't know, I'm always a little bit take off your glasses but then it's so hard to see with the lights and everything so just let me know if that's a major problem with you guys in the comment section arcane season one episode eight who said that silko silko no mel said that tell me who said that netflix Yeah, it's a cup of fridges. This feels like I was there during this entire hype, the, the preparations for Arcane. I really wasn't there. I was I was off the internet during this whole Arcane period. <laughs> when Arcane goes out, we will get death threats. Doesn't matter if we win every award in the world, we will inevitably piss someone off who really, 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 really loves whichever character yeah. is an arcane and they will want to murder us. Um, yeah, that happens a lot when 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 players develop such a passion for the characters. Um, same thing with me. When I'm reacting to arcane and League of Legends content, I try not to say or, or be a specific way about certain things. Like, I'm openly honest about how I feel about the show. But I feel like, you know, sometimes when you're too caught up in or have or you're too passionate about something, sometimes comments can come across a little bit too mean and we don't really see it. So I always try to be understanding towards different people from different fan bases. But there are times when I'm like, yo yo i really don't want to upset um arcane fans because um like some of the fans cannot take certain types of uh constructive criticism not anything defeating arcane or anything like that but just you know like even if i don't know a specific thing i don't want people to be like oh um you should know this like I'm a new person to the arcane world, to the League of Legends world. Like, I'm learning. Take it easy on me, man. <laughs> I love it, but, you know, I'm still anxious, right? We're two to three weeks to the launch, so maybe I'm completely fooling myself and it's going to flop. Uh... Let's have a look at that trailer for Riot Games' this upcoming animated series. So, this is like League of Legends Christmas right now? Yeah. Holy <gasps> Oh, uh, shucks! We put in all of these reactors, uh, there. If it's even, like, videos. half as good as that trailer is... Oftentimes the question is, like, how do you make something good? How do you know it's good? What if you don't know these characters? What if you don't know anything about League of Legends? Would you still engage in this? Hopefully we succeeded in the biggest thing, which was making... Frames against this beautiful stained glass that was probably once like colorful and cheerful and happy but now it's shattered and broken 
the fact that somebody can make an hour-long reaction video off of like the smallest teasers that we've made is impressive. Let's have a closer look at this bit of animation because they're doing doubling. They're taking the character model and copying it, gun barrel here, gun barrel here, gun barrel here, which is a technique that's stolen directly from 2D animation. They dissected it, like every frame, like it was spot on um, most of the time. Her jaw unclenches as she opens her lips. I mean, I can't imagine how much of those are going to exist after we've released a whole season of Arcane, like what everybody's going to say and what it was going to do and think about it. It's not just a story or a project that goes out and if you don't like it, say la vie. Ah. It's like, no, it has to be good because it's this thing that our audience cares about so much, that we care about so much. So it's, you know, it's not easy to make decisions when you have that in the back of your head. project which I actually always thought was a detriment but I was recently told that that was actually something they were looking for so I was like oh good <laughs> that's pretty pissed that's a little too pissed they put so much detail and so much thought into the animation you really do want to match it you know like you want it to be just as, she cool, with sound? Just as nuanced and um, sound as cool as it looks yeah so Andy is the sound effects mixer so all the cool design, the weapons. The sound is what I think really connects for a lot of people. Like they may not realize it. Same thing with like music. Music is kind of like a universal language. There's something about that, you know, sonic thing that gets in your ear that really, I think, brings helps bring stuff to life. Like when I go see a scary movie, I I cover my ears, man. I don't I don't cover my eyes, right? Sometimes I cover my eyes. Sometimes I cover my ears. Daunting. What was that, five? Yeah. Split, split the diff. I'm gonna you. Drop the gun! The goal is clarity in the end. You know, it's supposed to be like not noticed in a way. You know, if it's noticed, maybe it's done, you know, it's done wrong because it's like scenes are believable when people believe that they're in them. Um, sorry, my watch went off. Totally 100% agree with that sound has to flow so well that you don't notice it's happening but it's there affecting your brain like the same thing with music you don't consciously sometimes know there is music there sometimes you're watching a scene and the music is playing and you don't differentiate the scene from the music because you feel like you're in it to that extent whereby everything is just there and unless you stop for a minute and analyze that particular scene you will not notice that hey music is playing that is what's creating this kind of effect that you're having so it's so important totally ruined your sound bite dude <laughs> shit oh Where my gosh we should have had shirts sound. that said sound bros arcane sound bros i'm with stupid yeah we, we make the noises. <laughs> Welcome, thank you, to H150. A giant empty room. This whole room for just Brad and I. <sighs> Thanks, COVID. <laughs> you know, for just developing the soundscapes and kind of getting some temp mixes down. These rooms are perfect for that, and then we can go to the stage and kind of fine tune things. It's very identical to Brad's. Exactly the same, actually, except for I have some plants. I'm a big plant guy, but obviously everything would die in this room, so I had to find the best-looking fake plants. Target. Target's got some great fake Damn, plants. That, that, um, oh, these, these are uh, motion picture MPSC awards. These were for uh, Blade Runner and uh, a game Resident Evil. Mm. And hopefully there'll be a third one there. When you come back and film us for season two or something. <laughs> Sound design, when you're working in animation, you're working completely from, from scratch for everything. 
And then a lot of times it's easy to just kind of do the bare minimum uh, of what's needed for the scene because that's just sort of the aesthetic. Um, but for this, from day one, it was let's create a really, really authentic sounding production track. Brad and I's job ultimately is to work on the relationship between dialogue, music, and effects to help sell a believable story. Sound is so I remember important, man. in our second episode, there was this council scene where Jace has to kind of answer for his unsanctioned research. And that scene just did not work for me in the animatics and everything. And, and, and I looked at this script page and I was like, no, this is, these are the right words. Like, we're, we're saying the right things. The animation looked great. I was like, what is the problem? The materials were far more dangerous than I was aware of. Sounds like how it was recorded in were against Academy uh, regulations. the VO booth. What I did endangered people. It was ah, reckless. Finally but we to sell the, the actor sheer mass Jace. of this room, you know, you add reverb. It was revolutionary. Revolutionary how? All I see is a Get boy meddling with things he doesn't understand. The second there was that like feeling of the, the, the words just expanding into this eerie space. Mm -hmm. It felt like every word just mattered so much more, you know? And that was the first time that scene really worked for me. Birds chirping. You guys know I don't have to go look for um, <laughs> birds chirping effects. I have them right outside, right outside. Bee Gees, backgrounds. You know, backgrounds are, you know, what world is this character in? Uh, what's happening around them? What could be happening around them? The conversation with backgrounds is sort of like our wallpaper, kind of like lays the foundation. And sometimes it's a combination of stuff that you've recorded in the field. We try to go out almost every, at least once a week or on the weekends. I'm, co I'm constantly recording. My parents have this kind of four by five. But when I pitched down the recordings I did, I got this, the engine had this kind of repetitive, I was like, that's basically the industrial zone. Mm -hmm. The steam releases, a cool little air compressor burst pitched down. And then the Foley is really that next layer, right? Creating this whole level of realism. For animation, it's huge. The Foley crew was um, our good buddies at One Step Up. Dan O'Connell, John Cucci, totally, totally crushed it. Each one of these tracks is, you know, somebody watching this scene and doing all the, the feet for that one character, going back, doing the feet for that next character. You guys don't know how much I enjoy um, the sound aspect of movies and television. I love how they create this entire process. I watched this um, series a couple years ago whereby I got to see firsthand what they were doing with the sound because it was a movie generally about that. And um, we see that these people were actually creating the sound um, in the studio. They were watching the movie and creating the sound. I see them breaking like um, I think it was celery or something to create like a, a like somebody got hit in their knee with a wood so to create a breaking sound they would break the celery and then in editing they would either hire the pitch or something like that so that was pretty incredible so this part here amazes me truly footsteps props which is kind of like this is a prop when you set it on the table and it has a sound and then gear which is like you know, Vi has a certain jacket on with a buckle, and uh, that buckle makes a sound. So detailed. You can kind of so get a different detailed. feeling on each person. Um, mm -hmm. Brad and I come from a world of creating game assets and characters in game where Foley is a huge player in games. Jinx. So, you know, our viewpoint on Foley is like, we need it and play it loud. Dan and John and what they did is like their stuff is always 90% there and it fits in and it's great but sometimes you need to embellish it
Oh, yeah. The phone yeah. on its own, it, it doesn't yeah. do what you need it to do, but like just the sound effects by itself. And it doesn't have that realism and the texture that you need from like something that's, that's real. So together, There was a lot of organic recordings and thought that went into sounds that came from the natural world. I kind of pick up everything that sounds cool and <laughs> just keep it. Do the elk are just going to start running into the building <laughs> through the walls? <laughs> I took that and sampled it out. Whoa. 50 cal bullet. Oh my god. How about cassettes? This is amazing. Got a lot of weird shit. If you guys don't know, um, well, obviously you guys don't know what am I saying, but sound, I'm more so an audio learner than a than visually um, two of them together wonderful but if it was visually or um, audio I am more so inclined to remember things by listening and by conversing by talking than actually seeing and reading and viewing so this for me is happiness right here for me the biggest thing was the uh, the magic like the hex core and this is like the beginning and the origin of magic of League of Legends like Creating something that totally sounded new and was the beginning, and it had to progress through the whole season. You know, I wow. took some time and recorded some wine glasses. So this is pitched up and then thrown through a tremolator. And then it's also thrown through a Doppler. And then Brad messing with a bunch of different synthesizers and like, like a chimey tonal thing with uh, a choir. Kind of has both sounds intertwined into it. Yep. The more... Oh, that was so good! And then like shimmer, like the whole shimmer thing. The biggest player in the shimmer is actually... That's your voice. <laughs> Would that be hilarious if that's just how we talk? Elliot! Yeah! Uh... So just <laughs> recording is some of that so stuff, funny. Um, just kind of gave us this like weird palette of stuff to play with, you know, running it through uh, an impulse response. It's taking that and then adding like a liquid kind of bubbly component to it. But One thing about Brad and I is we, we work together well, like you create building blocks as Riot likes to call mm -hmm. it. Taking those building blocks and building on top of that and building more and more on top of that and going six or seven steps beyond your first step, all of a sudden you've got something really cool. And then putting on your sound editor cap, it's like taking all that cool stuff that you made, putting it up against picture and making really hard decisions about what to, what to keep, what to get rid of. <laughs> You still listen to stuff on those swords hits? Uh, those sword swipes? Carving through it? Yeah. Uh, no. Are you? We might play. What do we got? 3.30? We have half an hour. That was the initial design, which you kind of lose because it just sits in the register of the music. Any sound designer can create amazing sounds, um, but to create clarity and to tell the story that the director is trying to put together. But you have to be able to to pivot a lot. So like these are kind of fireworks I've recorded. Getting that sizzle on stuff. A nice little trick that I do is this, this is basically just a volume graph. But what I like to do sometimes, instead of tremulating the sound, I'll draw it in like this, uh, which I do a lot on creature vocals and stuff. But basically it gives you this. <coughs> You see how it kind of cuts through a little bit? It 
it's it just blows me away. Like they're like, hey, we need a sound for Savika's plasma blade. You know, he's like, hold, hold my, my beer. beer. <laughs> uh, right now, I am at my parents' house in the north of Germany. This is one example of me thinking of, of the arcane story. <laughs> <laughs> There were definitely moments of being pretty overwhelmed, for sure. I mean, um, speaking for myself, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I work actually well under stress, except for when you have so many stressful things that you, that you feel like you lose oversight, if that makes sense. You know, animation over there, music over there, voice, talent. Thanks, 75. Profits have been plummeting. I think it will be nice uh, on, you know, profits have been plummeting to kind of, uh, uh, to like, yeah, like have like those pop. And you don't know if the scripts for less episodes are working and the planning for season two. And there definitely are those moments where you just feels like it just is too much, you know? I, I think that's why the burnout rate for, I think, showrunners is like 100% in general. Yeah, because the amount of work Christian is taking on is like unbelievable. The stress level. It's just too much. I personally, I th I think that I work well under pressure, mainly because I don't take pressure on. Like if something is becoming too much for me, I would literally just walk away from it um, and not deal with it. Christian, on the other hand, has no choice but to because this is important. This is very important. And um, so many people are depending on him as the showrunner. So it's kind of incredible what he's doing here. Knowing that the show is going out in November, really, I think it won't be real to me until it actually goes out into the world. And right now, the thing that keeps me up at night is trying to make sure that uh, the next season doesn't disappoint there's some other option, right? It's like, die, or, you know, like, accept some things being imperfect, you know, or something like that. That's kind of like the other path, right? That would be the way that they could go back to humanity. No, I think we need to find a big structure. We think we can simplify it. The big hope, I guess, with this trip to Fortiche is to lock down the final episodes of season two. The mm, end that I won't talk about very much uh, is, is one that it's is crazy. complex. What else do you want to remove? You can remove also the... There's one thing about the ending that is new. We're like, oh, that that's sort of the same beat we had in 206. Okay, that was sort of the thing we were hinging this whole episode around, and now it's not there anymore, so let's just redo the whole thing. This part, I think, is just a particularly hard part of stories. Getting from your middle to the, okay, on track. Final run on the Death Star, you know, that kind of that kind of location. It's so hard to wipe the slate clean on something. I think I just need to step back and yeah. need to like try and figure this episode out without thinking about all the things that we've talked about. I know. But we also don't want the baby to go out, Alex. We don't want to murder this baby with our bathwater. Is that suggesting that we are filling it with more bath water right now. A lot of bath water. We're not dumping out the bath water, we're adding bath water. Mm. The baby is steadily drowning. This is incredible. Um, so many things to think about. I'm circling the exact location of the problem, because when you say uh, this is a little uh, blurry or uh, there is a bug here. Sometimes it's difficult to just spot the right place and the right frame. As you can see, we can't see the, the shard behind the glass. But the glass is transparent, so we have to see it. So it's a problem.
Ah, 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 videos with Jinx as a centerpiece. I become so familiar with her launcher, you know, every time I'm seeing it now in Arcane, I'm like, Jinx, that's Jinx, you know. I think watching these League of Legends videos just give me a new perspective on the entire thing. Um, I'm learning a lot, so that's, that's good. Fartish and Arnaud and Pascal, I really, really, really trust them. The heart's in the right place, you know, like you just know that they're always gonna err on the side of quality and passion. Son bras doit être allumé là comme ça avec le où il est. Non, il est éteint. Ah, il est éteint. Il est censé être éteint. On peut toujours apporter quelque chose de plus. Et c'est ça qui est des fois un petit peu frustrant pour nous parce qu'on est assez perfectionniste et c'est de dire bon, allez, là, on lâche, on lâche le clavier. Des fois, c'est un peu dur. Ouais. This scene, I'm still, I still want to know what's going to happen here. Season two. Uh, it's not so, totally luck. <laughs> it's never, it's never, uh, never luck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you guys think uh, doing work with animation stresses you out to the point of getting early grades? <laughs> Notes all make sense? Yeah. People always say, oh, when you work on something, you leave a piece of yourself. In this case, it's just like, it, it, it definitely took a chunk out of me. I think the best thing that I could somehow do and hopefully add some value is make stuff where we ask relevant questions and where we can show people different perspectives. I am the monster you created. Well, for Vi and for Jinx, the central question is, can you ever forgive a monster? How far are you willing to go for your sibling? Is there a line where you just can't go for your sibling and you just have to say, sorry, this is where I have to... This is a question I ask in my Arcane video reactions to the series. I asked that question, how do we redeem a character like like, like Jinx, um, yeah, how do we do that, you know, do we even do that? Some people were saying Jinx is perfect the way she is, others were saying that's a question for us to really figure out and um, this is crazy, I, if, I, if I put my family in regards and I'm and, and she's Jinx, my sister. Am I willing to go to that length? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm a pretty... No, I'm not gonna answer this next thing she watches this video. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you just took out. Back. Does anything that we can achieve with Arcane? past just the sheer entertainment, if there's just some good questions to ask for all of us and find our own answers, man, that's, I think, the best thing Arcane could do. finale whereby it would be better than this like for instance how in the world do you come back from this this is there has so many questions that when season two comes out it's gonna be so explosive the ratings are gonna be off the charts for this show i just know it approve <laughs> yes 
I can tell this whole process was stressful for everybody involved. It's going to be the first media product in the history of the world to launch everywhere, including China, at the same time. And we got Netflix and Amazon to actually partner because we're live streaming it on Twitch and enabling our players to restream it. Like crazy shit you'd only do at Riot ever that no one's ever done before. have you spent six years on one project for in your life? One one single thing <laughs> have you spent six years for before? Marriage? <laughs> there you go. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's been pretty crazy to realize that the day's finally come. You know, we've been working on this for a long time. And uh, it's finally here. We certainly didn't expect anything on this caliber for the release of it, so it's very cool. It's just, I think, really important to us that we create something that our audience can be proud of. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're putting on this suit jacket. Okay, I'm not putting on trousers, though. That's where I draw the line. That is incredible. If I was somebody Locking who was the actually there, like I would that. hate being followed by a robot. That being said, as the robot, I have no problems putting somebody into a vaguely uncomfortable situation. That is, they have to talk to an iPad that is on a stick. I am 100% interrupting something here, haven't I? I saw what you on YouTube! Wait, you actually know who the f I am? I saw what you on YouTube! Oh. I'm a huge fan of your stuff. I watched all your videos. I'm a huge fan of your stuff, League of Legends. I mean, the dream and the hope was always that League was the start of so much more. But, you know, the expectations only go up. They're high, so we. Uh, oh, nice so I'm lucky. I've, I've had a long association with Rock because I played Brom in League of Legends. Like, Wait, you're Brom? I'm oh, Brom. You're oh Brom? My God. How old okay. is this strongest? I just met Brom, like in some of my reactions. Oh. Oh, oh my my God. God. The, the responsibility of this is kind of scary because I mean, look, it's like the anticipation from the fans is just. You're you can feel it. It's like yeah. tangible, even on the. Am I being tricked right now? He's Vander. So why did he say he's Brom? Is he Brom and Vander? Oh, newbie stress, man. Newbie stress. <laughs> My agent sent me out for it, and I was like, oh, this is cool, you know, a black kid, he's a scientist, he's super sick, you know? Echo. And then when I got in, I was like, oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> I'm sure you've been to a lot of premieres. This is much different, right, than it's, most? It's a lot cooler than most, I gotta sure. say. Okay. Okay. Highly Central Place Why? Why does this show still continue to shock me? That's crazy. Right. This is the, the, the production value. This is like so incredible. I just can't hear it. She's such a well, good actress. Well, how do you approach this challenge? Yeah, I don't know. I think the universal themes of hating someone you love and loving someone you hate is just very relatable. <laughs> Doing something like this, you never really know sort of what your what the end result is going to no, look like. I'm but the here. team behind this is absolutely unbelievable. And since from day one, I knew that I wanted to be involved. I just can't wait to see what the players and what fans think of the show. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. I have to say, I've never been as proud of the job. Finally, now actually it's out and anyone tonight across the world can turn on Netflix and watch it. That makes me really happy. <laughs> it's a weird Victor. feeling. Victor! Wow! Should be very special, yeah. I think I'm going to be too afraid to really see what the reactions are. I think, I think I'm just going to watch it and then I'm just not going to look online for as long as I can. We've poured like six years into this, you know? The idea of having to someone go, this is like, uh, I think it would be brutal. All I can safely assume is that the League audience is gonna be unmerciful. <laughs> Which, whichever way yeah. that goes, you know? If they love it, they will probably send me baskets of food. Uh, if they hate it, they will send me baskets of shit.
I could imagine everybody who is at that premiere right now, especially the people involved in that product, in the show Arcane, they are sitting there looking at every single detail, not necessarily enjoying it, but critic, uh, criticizing everything, looking for reactions. That is, that is stressful, man. To, to be there and be like, I hope everybody likes it, man. Like, well, I just really wish in times like these, when the, the job is done, we could just sit down and enjoy the product. But it's very hard for us as content creators to um, enjoy what we create. Most of the time, it's very hard to even look at because we are so critical of ourselves. So, yeah, it's... it's oof. Oof. When Christian sent me the first cut of the last five minutes of episode three, I bawled. <laughs> I like straight, like ugly cried. <laughs> me too. It was just, <laughs> sorry, I didn't think about it. Check out Arkin episode 3 reaction on my channel. You would see me. I I was like, yo, I feel like the entire time. No, episode 3 hit me so hard, guys. Look at them. Look at them in the audience. They're blowing their eyes out. So many people work so hard trying to do justice to people's expectations and they're doing it because of this love, you know, and sense of responsibility to not let players down. It just makes us incredibly proud to see, you know, the reactions and see those things actually happening. We'll show them. We'll show them all. We will show them all. It's <laughs> a heartbreaking scene. Uh, wow. super proud of the team I'm super happy for Christian and then all the people that helped make it happen like hundreds of people worked on it to bring it together not to mention the thousands of writers that built the IP that we were then able to translate into this so the feeling that we really wanted people to have is that we handled that IP with care and love love you man oh dude I'm so happy with it bro how do you feel I haven't looked at my phone at all today so I'm going on the assumption that everyone hates the show and we're canceled and this is the last night of joy we're going to have in our lives. You probably haven't seen any of the reviews or anything. No, I haven't touched my phone and since I sat down, I don't want to see it. You don't even want to, you're like, you're going gonna, to you're gonna make, you're going to be happy though. Have fun, review, That's cool. Netflix, dude, I'm so proud of you, man. Well, My expectations were like, it's gonna be good. But after the finale, what a fool I was. It was so brilliant. Today we're taking a look at the new Netflix show, Arcane, and I wanna just start by saying it slaps. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, wow, that's, that's lit. lit. I don't know, I'm so overwhelmed. Mainly gratitude. I'm so proud of what this team, like the, the excellence so exceeded my expectations and I just, I know very well how ridiculous this climb was. I literally said to him, I remember I said to him, if it goes down, we'll go down for the show. I, I literally said, you can have my job. Like, I'm so Merci à Christian pour 
la confiance, the trust, you know, the trust of Christian in Fortiche. At the very beginning of Fortiche. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, everybody. Et maintenant, que la soirée commence! Il y a beaucoup de gens qui étaient investis dessus et je pense que ce qui a fait aussi la force et la qualité d'Arken, c'est que tout le monde était très passionné et a toujours été très très motivé. Quoi. Je pense qu'il y avait cette idée un peu de, de se dépasser, de ne pas rester sur ses acquis et de, de, de prendre des risques quelque part. Et je pense que ça, c'était payant hein, aussi. J'étais à un dîner récemment avec la directrice de Fortiche et ils ont dit qu'ils sont très heureux maintenant parce que quand ils ont été dans cette industrie, They really wanted to create something to be history of the animation world. And they were smiling and they were saying, it's such a relief that after six years now, they feel like they know they worked on something that is part of animation history. It doesn't matter if the project is like a wild success or it's doing fine or, or you know, worse than that. If anything, we've crafted something that pushes the animation world forward by a significant margin. It's nice getting above it all, huh? The fact that we can spend now I'm hearing her five voice. hours now in I'm hearing just Tilt Over and Zon and then do it again in a second season before we start to zoom out all right. of this one little corner. Um. I think this is the first time I'm looking at the league map. Um, so we have Piltover and Zon. Hmm, there's so many. So this could be like so widespread. Because I, as I'm now reacting to some league cinematics, I'm seeing so much potential storytelling here. This could be revolutionary. Like, so many wow this is incredible i see so much potential for you know all of this like so many different things these guys can achieve outside of piltover and zone so yeah this is crazy um this is crazy of the world and this handful of characters just the possibility space is so wild you yeah. know alex made a comment to me last night he's like i could see myself telling stories in this universe for the next 30 years yes. it's a small miracle that this tv show got made and it's a it's a smaller miracle that so many god tier artists came together to work on one project and you, you can't not be proud of what they did, so, yeah. The other blessing and a curse for me and Alex is, like, we're never satisfied and we always want it to be better. So, no matter how much you think you might know about what's coming in Season 2, there's always going to be tons of new stuff to discover. I think people are going to be really excited about what they find. The reason why I joined Riot is because I like playing the game. I loved it. I think when Alex and I were starting to talk about making something like Arcane, we just thought that this should exist because we want to watch it. We love these characters. Mm -hmm. We love these worlds. I think maybe my favorite thing above all of Arcane is that I am very confident in saying that there's many people who work on Arcane right now that feel like they're working on the most important thing of their lives, like their careers. I feel like people feel like they're challenged, they're working on something that's going to matter, they're going to look back to and say, I'm, yes, like that's a proud moment of my life and I'm happy I worked on it. And that to me is probably the most important thing. Incredible, incredible five-part series. Um, I'm absolutely amazed. I am overwhelmed with emotions for this final part. Oof, it was so emotional, you know. I, 
I think this just was like this was such a wonderful thing for them to do you know to journey and document this entire process because without doing that I don't think the audience would have understood how difficult or how stressful this process was and appreciate Christian to this extent of you know risking it as the first part says I only dream in risky and Christian definitely put out that type of risk because um, nobody knew you know they, they said they've been planning this series for six years so no one knew that this would be to this extent that it is now um, so Christian was definitely the guy that brought new creative energy into Riot Games. He was definitely that guy that was just out of the box, out of ordinary and, and pushing and, and incredible. And I see that the show has been so successful. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy. Um, I can't wait for our game season two. I want to thank you guys, especially those of you who watch these um, videos. I know they're they're lengthy, but I'm so thankful that you watch them. Um, yeah, thanks for commenting, for liking. This really means a lot because you know a lot of people are not gonna spend their time reacting to this, and I I just wanted to examine. I wanted to see for myself the process. I wanted to document this with you guys. And it was such a great, because um, I think it's like five weeks, yeah, five weeks we've been doing this. So thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you stay tuned for all the reactions on my channel. When I get the community posts, hopefully soon, um, we're going to be able to interact more, I think. And um, I'll be able to know my audience better and what you guys want me to react to. So yeah, I'm... I'm I, uh, I don't really have too much to say about this anymore. I've said so much already. I'm just so happy, you know, I'm thankful. And if you're watching this video for the first time, consider subscribing to my channel. Did you like this series? Did you like this series? T tell me, let me know, let me know. And um, yeah, until next time.